Thank you very much uh, to LACEA for organizing this session. What I'm presenting here is um, joint work with Cecilia Rosell and Federico Scalese. And what we are doing is exploring the link be, uh, between hours of work and early childhood education and care services in Latin America. Our motivation is basically um, these services, early childhood uh, corresponds to children age three to five and childcare services for children uh, for smaller children up to three years old. This type of services has increased their coverage in developed and developed countries through a very, through an important diversity of institutional forms and designs. And the same process took place in Latin America. We have uh, literature there analyzing uh, the expansion of these uh, childcare and preschool services. Again, with a very uh, by, by, with a lot of variation in the design, public provision, services provided by the civil society organizations, but subsidized by the state, private services, etc. And a characteristic of this um, of these uh, services in Latin America is the highly stratified enrollment rates of enrollment. So very big differences by income quintile levels of education, etc. Uh, we have at the world level uh, evidence about the benefit for, uh, for children's uh, cognitive and social skills, positive effect, but also uh, we know that the effects finally depend uh, or um, have much to do with so, uh, child socioeconomic context and with the quality of the services. So there are, are uh, differences dependent on these two key factors. Um, and we know that uh, there are some positive effects for mother level market outcomes, but again, there is uh, a lot of heterogeneity in these effects, in the results, depending on the country. And uh, up to what we know, there are mainly no explanations about potential effects with unpaid work. Here we are not looking at effects, this is just a, a first look about associations. Another important motivation is that we know that gender gaps in time dedicated to housework are higher in Latin American countries than in the developed world. And also that uh, having children imposes relatively high costs uh, in terms of uh, labor market trajectories for women in the region. We have now evidence about this for, for some countries in the region based on administrative data. And we can track uh, the medium and, and long term effects of that. So what we are doing here is exploring if there is an association between this uh, child care and education policies and family arrangement in Latin American countries. Specifically, how do inter-household gender gaps in paid and in unpaid work, hours of work, relate to the availability of these services? So we compare these gender gaps in time use uh, within a household, in households, within a couple, uh, considering households uh, with children and comparing uh, with the gaps that uh, prevail in, in couples, in, in other uh, in couples whose, whose children do not attend, or attend or do not attend to these services, uh, it's important again that we are we have uh, we are not making, of course, an impact evaluation. This is just a first exploration of this relationship based on time use data. Uh, what we know about the effect of this of this uh, uh, policy of these services in in paid and unpaid work, as I said, what we know is ma mainly for uh, paid work. We know that the expansion of these services increased labor for participation of mothers with young children in developed countries, for example, in Spain, in Canada, uh, in the Netherlands. And the effects are, in general, um, uh, higher among women with lower levels of education or lower income levels. But again, there are differences by countries. For example, there, is, um, there are studies for Norway that show that mainly uh, newly subsidized childcare crowded out informal childcare, and so there were no effects on, on mother's labor outcomes. Or in Sweden, which already had a well developed uh, and highly subsidized childcare system, further, uh, further expansions did not have, a, have a negligible impact on mother's outcomes. So, Context and institutional settings are playing a role in this relationship. For Latin America, we have, again, mixed evidence. For Argentina, 
Uh, and for Nicaragua, we have uh, positive effects of childcare services or uh, childcare in the case of Nicaragua and preschool expansion in the case of Argentina. For the countries that uh, we consider in this in this paper, which are uh, Chile, Colombia, Mexico, and Uruguay, we have again mixed evidence. Uh, the expansion of childcare in Chile uh, it did not have effects on female labor supply, and there you have the references. And the expansion of preschool provision for children aged three to five also did not have effects on labor market outcomes of mothers in, in Uruguay. Again, it, this is a case of, of crowding out from the private sector, from the private um, preschool. And there is also evidence of positive effects of the expansion of childcare in Colombia and uh, also for the case of Mexico. But as I said, we do not have uh, we do not have studies about the effect or, or the association with the with the hours of unpaid work. What we what many articles and, and what the literature shows is that these factors influence intra-household decisions about household within couples, but uh, it's something not that has not been uh, explored. So what we are doing here is we use uh, time use surveys for, Ch for Chile, Colombia, Mexico, and Uruguay. Uh, it's important that all of them are based on survey questions, so it's not their information. So the quality of the data is not so good as in developed countries, but uh, it's the only available data for, for time use. In the case of Uruguay, it's, um, it's the, the time use survey is a module in the in the household survey, and in the other three countries, it is a special uh, time use survey with national coverage. And we m select household with a couple uh, and at least one child under six years old. That means that there, there in the chart you have the percentage of households that we are selected in our final sample is around 30% of the of the sample uh, formed by. Um, a, a, a couple and, and at least one child under six years old. The main characteristics of the of these households and uh, it, one very important characteristic is a very high percentage of these households depend only on male learnings and that goes from 40 percent uh, in Chile to 50 percent in Colombia according to this survey. So a high percentage depends only on male learnings and also we are uh, I'm presenting the results that correspond to households where there are other adults in the household. So it's uh, a, a high percentage of these households have. Um, I know, a grandmother or grandfather, etc. We also have the, our results for only for biparental uh, households, and they remain. So uh, the main variables that we are looking at are total uh, unpaid work. We have that variable for men and women, and we also split that the hours of unpaid work of each person in the hours that correspond to childcare hours, uh, and the hours that correspond to other. Uh, domestic and paid work like cooking, shopping, cleaning, etc. Um, and we define within each household the gap in unpaid work as the difference between female and male hours dedicated to housework. And also we have that for the two types of unpaid ha uh, housework. And we also look at the gap in paid hours, but in this case defined as male minus female, so that when we do our regressions, the uh, we, we can easily interpret the coefficients. The graph there, what uh, we are showing is that uh, the gender gaps in unpaid work, uh, the average gender gaps in unpaid work and in paid work in the four countries, the yellow bars correspond to households uh, with children uh, under, to our sample of households with children under uh, six years old. The gaps are very significant. This is uh, ours per week and we have a very significant difference in the hours that men and women dedicate to housework in, in all the countries. And what we do is a, 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 a very uh, simple estimation trying to relate our outcomes, which are gender gaps in total unpaid work, gender gaps in childcare, gender gaps in other unpaid work, and gender gaps in paid work with the characteristics of the household which are and the, and the couple, the main personal characteristics, which are uh, reflected in the said variable. And we include uh, three binary variables to, uh, that show the situation of the household. That may be all the children in the household attend to these uh, services, whether childcare or preschool. Some of the children attend and the others not. And uh, the third situation is that uh, none of the children uh, 
at, um, benefit from these services. We include, as I said, the traditional control variables for age and each square for both members of the couple, education, the persons of children of other ages, the ADAMI that indicates if the household uh, hires domestic survey, uh, if, there is an, if there are other adults, how many other adults apart from the couple, etc. <clears throat> what we have in our sample is that uh, in, in, a, in a high percentage in all countries, a relative high percentage of children are in the situation where all of them assist, all of the children under six years old assist to the to childcare or, or preschool, but also uh, in a very high number of, of countries, none of them does, and the intermediate situation is like minor part of our sample in the it, as you see here you have we have very similar patterns uh, uh, in the in these four countries so the general context the gaps um, no we are not i will i will go through that uh, we have all these countries have different uh, systems uh, and yeah uh, the hours Dedicated here we have the let's look at the at the gender gap in in unpaid work that is there divided by the part that corresponds to childcare which is the blue one and the green one is the other the other um, the other unpaid work within the household and in all countries both uh, the the gap is uh, is uh, split between these two types of type except in Uruguay where the difference in terms of childcare are lower than in the other countries. These are the rates of attendance. Uh, I just I will just uh, mark that for very small children, uh, one, two, or uh, three years old, we have a low, relatively low rates in all countries. And then for the five, four and five years, we have a, a good coverage in 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 all countries. But for the whole, we are uh, in a situation where I'm half of the of the children below six years are attending any kind of service of childcare or education. Other thing that we do not have, or we only have for Colombia, Chile, is the number of hours. So for the other two countries, we cannot control for that. But let me show some results. This is, I'm only presenting the coefficients related to the binary variables that discriminate if all the children attend, if some of them do, or if no, none of them does do. The first column is care work. Uh, ch uh, childcare. The other, uh, the second is housework, and the third column is the difference. Uh, per, sorry, is the total uh, gap in unpaid work. So we have Chile, um, Colombia, Mexico, and Uruguay. And in the four countries, what we have in the red circle is that when all children attend, there is a significant reduction in the gap uh, in un in total unpaid work. That is the third column, and that is driven by the reduction in time that, uh, dedicated to care work. The coefficients are uh, quite similar for the three countries, except for, for Chile, that they are higher. It is hours per week. And also in the, in the situation where some of the children attend the, the services and the others not, is equivalent that the situation where none of the children go to the services. What drives this reduction in the gap? Here what we do is we, we estimate the hours of, of, paid, of each type of unpaid work for women and men. And uh, this, uh, this is not always, but sure, uh, seemingly unrelated regressions. And uh, what we see there is that the, the red cycles try to show that in all cases, the reduction is driven by the reduction in the time dedicated by women to childcare. There is no change in the time um, in the association with the time that men dedicate, only a, a small um, change in the, only in Chile and Uruguay there are some small reductions that are in, in green there. Uh, so in, the, in terms of the hours that, they, that men and women dedicate to other types of housework, there is no significant correlation. Uh, the other part of the of the results refer to gaps within each household in paid work and in total work. Total work is, of course, the sum of, of both types. And we have a reduction in this gap also. Remember that this gap was defined as, uh, as male minus female uh, hours dedicated in the, in the, within the household. And the reductions are 
uh, higher, for example, in, in Uruguay and in Chile than in the other two countries. But total work, total time uh, dedicated to work, whether paid or unpaid, does, does not change or does not have any significant um, variation. Yes, per week. Uh, and again, when we when we um, we do these estimations separately for uh, men and women to try to see this reduction in the in the um, in the in the in the number of hours dedicated to paid work, what is driven what drives this? And it's mainly the increase in, in the time that women dedicate to paid work in in all in all the countries, and also again we have like. Um, but see only only significant results when all the children are attending these services or or educations yes so basically um the reduction in the in the gender uh, gap in paid work is basically because of the increase in the number of paid hours by by women no changes no association with with changes in in men's uh, time dedicated to paid or unpaid work uh if we do, if we exclude uh, households with children uh, under one year old that may be too small to attend these services, the results remain, and they and they are stronger if we restrict our sample only to households um, formed by by a couple with no other adults living in the household. So we exclude new uh, new uh, composite or extended households, and also when we split our sample between uh, trying to see the effect for uh, smaller children and, and older ones, smaller like uh, smaller, uh, younger than three years old, the results are, are in, the, in the, we can see them in, the, in both groups. So basically what, what we are exploring as a, as a first approximation to the relationship between these services and, and, time, and time use within the households is that the assistance is associated to a decline in the gender gap in unpaid and in paid work within households, and this is mainly driven uh, by the by changes for women, and there are no changes for men. There are no significant effects in total hours of work; it's like a substitution, and the changes are associated almost entirely with uh, changes uh, in, in women's allocation of time when all the children attend to to the services. So, incomplete atten attendance is uh, equivalent to not children attending, basically. So, that's it.